guys, my name is Mike and welcome back to XC Garage, a channel that's built for today's Acura's Hondas and all the classics. Talking about today's Honda, we have a brand new Honda Civics FKA behind me and it has a bunch of spoon parts. And we actually got a few more parts just came in. I want to give a special thanks to GoTuning. Definitely give them a visit, www.gotuning.com. Let's go check out Brian and see what he got there. Okay, so right here we have the Spoon Sports bumper. It's an authentic bumper. We're, as far as I know, we're one of the first to do this. Very few in the States that actually come with the carbon fiber feature, okay? This is carbon fiber and it's beautiful and it's gonna be integrated into the bumper when we do it. Now, when we take a look at the bumper here, it has a two-tone. Now, the two-tone is gonna be half champ white and half jet black. So we'll go ahead, we'll paint this bumper uh, champ white first and then after it's done we'll sand it down and we'll mask a line that goes all along here according to the scheme of uh, spoon of the spoon bumper and then we'll paint it black and then re-clear the whole thing as well as putting a fresh coat of clear on this carbon fiber portion now the rear bumper follows the same scheme from spoon but it's a little bit easier so let's check that out Now the rear bumper is going to be a little bit easier because that carbon fiber is actually separated from it. It's a much bigger piece and we'll go over how we get that shine back on pieces just like this. Now on the rear bumper here, once again, it'll all be painted champ white and then it will be sanded down and this area over here will be a black portion, okay? And then with the champ white, the jet black and the carbon fiber, it is a beautiful combination. But before we do all that, what's most important is we gotta test fit it. Okay, so you saw after the first test fit that the bumper just didn't go on. Now that's because this is a Japanese bumper and it's an American car, so the uh, reinforcement part is much bigger. Now the owner told us we might need to cut something, so we found out what we needed to cut. Now we're gonna go ahead with a saw and go through it like butter.
right tool will go a long way. It makes it that easy. So before we put the spoon bumper back on, we actually have to swap out the, uh, what's that called? Again? It's like a retainer spacer, uh, clips the bumper to the fender. And uh, this actually Just come with a kit. Yeah from spoon. I don't know what's different about it, but I guess like, the design of the actual spoon bumper is slightly different with the mounting tabs. So this just makes sure it fits right to the actual fender. So this will use some uh, washers, nuts and bolts instead of the traditional screws uh, that we're used to. Everything is trimmed, let's give it one more try. So the front bumper is officially on. Let's go ahead and work on the rear bumper. Clips out, and Brian got about 15 clips out. And I have the right tool. <laughs> So the bumper is off now. Brian is uh, removing the rear bumper retainer. Once we remove that retainer, then we can try to test fit the spoon bumper. Yeah, so we're ready to do uh, our first test fitment on the rear bumper. So before we fit the bumper, we're gonna remove the tail lights just so we can allow the bumper to fit properly. How'd you do, Mike? Got yours out? Yep. So we're gonna pull the bumper back off. We know the bumper fits, but we wanna make sure our lip has clearance with the uh, back rebar. Guess all we do now is just, um, we just gonna bolt up the rear bumper to the carbon fiber lip.
so we got a carbon fiber lip on now. Let's give it out a try. So it looks like the rear lip actually hitting the rear reinforcement bar. So that means we're gonna have to do some uh, some trimming. Some trimming. It's funny because it's got a mark right where it's hitting, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I guess we'll kind of come up and around somehow and uh, see if we can open it up a little bit. All right, let's give it another try. We went ahead and took out the reinforcement bar because uh, I guess the rear lip was uh, hitting a little bit, right, Brian? Yeah. You sound in your voice, you're a little tired, huh? A little bit. <laughs> Let's take 50. <laughs> Okay, so the uh, the bumper's on now. We're gonna go ahead and have to uh, trim that bumper rebar in the back here. You know, Japan and the United States, they're a little bit different. So when you go to fit it up, they just don't, <laughs> they don't add up. They don't line up sometimes, but we're gonna make those modifications work and happen. We're gonna trim just a little bit of that bar so that that spoiler will fit in and it'll be just like factory. Ha -ha. So we got the bumper back here in the paint shop and we're ready to lay down our first coat of base. So what I suggest is to do everything in one color, we seal it down with clear coat. That way if we have any overspray from our black, we can go ahead and just scuff it off and we're good to go. And we're gonna have a smoother edge in the end. So let's go ahead and let's get some masking done now. Now the only thing we need to mask off is this carbon fiber portion. Now you can see what they've done is they've taken the carbon fiber and they've gone about about a quarter of an inch over what they need because we're going to bring the masking along this edge, okay? This right here is smooth, okay? So we'll bring our masking along this edge, carry it in, and then we'll go ahead and unmask this when we're ready to clear. Gonna use some adhesion promoter so my fine line will stick. Now I'm gonna show you on this corner how I lay down my fine line. I'm using a quarter inch poly precision tape by 3M. It's got little ribs in it to help it bend. I'll lay this down first and then I'll go back over it with my yellow tape. Now fine line has a bad reputation for wanting to pull up. So I go over it with some tape just to hold it down. And this also bridges the gap between the tape we already have down and any little spaces of carbon fiber that we don't want to get painted. Here's that fine line on the center portion of the lip. You can see how precise it needs to be. We got our paper on, so now we're gonna wanna curl it up so overspray doesn't get through and onto the lip. We'll put some tape on the back. All right, so we're ready to spray our base coat down. It's all been clean, it's ready to go. Let's put down a coat of base.
So when pulling off this tape, you want to pull it off kind of against itself, right? So you want to pull it off just like this, okay? Very slowly. This is going to reduce the risk of a bridge. It's going to leave a cleaner line. So far, so good. So first one looks pretty good. There we have it, a beautiful line. Really happy with the way this looks. Now I'm gonna take some reducer on a brand new prep towel and I'm gonna wipe this carbon fiber because I know I'm gonna get something off of it, some sort of white, okay? I guarantee you, you might not be able to see it on the rag, but there's always some sort of overspray. Now the reason why I can do it on the carbon fiber and not on the base coat is because it this carbon fiber is sealed with clear coat already. So it has a barrier, okay, against solvents. It's not gonna go into the layer underneath. Let's go ahead and let's clear it. All right, so there we have it. I put on one nice coat of clear, and this is gonna act as a sealant, right? So when I go to sand for my black two-tone, all right, I know I have the barrier that's protecting my, uh, my carbon fiber and my base coat, and that's very, very valuable. Nice, clean line. I'll go ahead, let this dry, and get it sanded and get ready for that black. So after all that sanding, we have the bumper back in the booth. Now the number one key before we start masking is clean, clean, clean. This whole entire bumper has been scuffed up, it's been degreased once more, clean with wax and grease remover, water-based cleaner, and now it is ready for the fine line tape. If we hadn't taken all these steps, the tape would not stick just the best it could, and we wouldn't have adhesion for our new paint. The next thing you wanna do is make sure these guys are really, really clean, okay? Any dirt that's from your hands can transfer onto the bumper, especially a white bumper and oils and all that. Again, the tape is just not gonna stick. So now these are the original OEM parts that fit onto the spoon bumper cover. And we're gonna be using these to make sure that our line is consistent all along. What I'm gonna do is extend the black up to this little bevel right here and bring it along the whole top of the bumper. This way I have a nice, clean, consistent area for my tape line.
isn't really any skill, to be honest, it's just patience. I really don't feel like there's any skill to this. After we pulled off all that tape, she's good to go. Let's go ahead, let's make this thing shiny. We're not gonna overload it with the clear because we're gonna still sand it down and flow coat it to bury these lines. So we're just gonna get a nice coat of clear on here for now. So the bumper's been drying for a couple days now. Now we're gonna do the flow coat where we're gonna sand it all down and just give it clear. And that's gonna help smooth out all these edges and just give it that much of a slicker, brilliant, beautiful look. So let's sand it down for the last time. So we just got the bumper back from Brian. It came out really, really good. Got the gloss black on the bottom, chain white on top. Brian, what else you got over there? Okay, so what I'm doing over here is I'm just putting on the back uh, support. Now, you saw earlier that we test fitted on and off. Now, a big chunk did have to come out of this. Check it out. In order for this to fit, uh, we had to take a good almost 36 inches out uh, by one inch. And this is the only way that that bumper cover will clear. Now, um, we're real happy with it. We went ahead and put some black paint on it. And now the next step is going to be, we actually have to cut these carpet uh, wheelhouses. And what they do is they, it comes with an actual template. And this is a template from Spoon right here. Now, if you take a look at this, uh, it will fit uh, pretty much like this. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll make sure it fits just the way we want. And we're pretty much taking off a big chunk. Okay, we're curving it and we'll reverse it on the other side. Uh, then it gives you a few holes, which will get some screws and some speed clips. So let's go ahead and get this on there. Let's trace it. Uh, we have our saw, our air saw, we'll cut it up and let's get this thing rolling. Okay, so we traced it out and uh, I think scissor, scissors is gonna be a much better tool to use really is carpet and it cuts really simple so check it out I think we're all ready for the, the real lip Brian bringing it over right now couple of screws, should be good to go. So, uh, 
what you're seeing here probably is just a few minutes, few seconds of uh, us putting the bolts on. But in reality, in real life, it was about close to 45 minutes to an hour because some of these bolt anchors, um, <laughs> yeah, they're not angled right. So let's take it off on and off and file them. But I think we got it now. Uh, 45 minutes. Yeah, we just seen that someone with super thin fingers and that's not me. <laughs> so we got the lip back in. Now is the grill, the mesh, what yep. is that, Brian? It's a mesh grill, it's just a cover piece, and uh, you line it up with these little pegs. And then we'll just uh, move the pegs across the mesh to hold it in, and we're good to go. What are those things, like rubber? These are like, uh, this is a sort of plastic, and these are like a type of metal inside, and it looks to be they're held down with some sort of um, glue. So we'll just bend them, bend them, okay? and this will hold them down. All right, so we're ready to put the bumper on. Now you can see there's two um, holes for two bolts. Now this does not bolt in the traditional fashion, right? So we had to remove that retainer right here and it's actually gonna bolt through with two bolts that go through these two holes. There is a third hole right in here that doesn't get used, that gets a clear uh, masking that we put on there, a clear film, so water doesn't get through. Now what Mike's doing is he's removing all of the interior panels to gain access to those two holes. Okay, so we are removing the uh, carpet. We'll release the harness and it looks like that speaker's gotta come out. Uh, harness and uh, looks like a few bolts should break it free. So on this side we'll go ahead and remove the weather stripping, a couple of small clips and it will break free and we're good to pull this right off. Okay, so now we're gonna put in a speed clip right here. Now this no longer gets bolted to the car. The uh, bumper and this flare become one piece and that's what holds it together. So got everything ready to go. About to put a rear bumper on. Brian bringing it over right now. So what we have to do is fit the carpet in first, right? And we have to be very gentle because this is a fiberglass bumper. There's a tab right here. Once we've overlapped it, we're good. And then we're just gently gonna fit the bumper between. And then gently, this is when all the test fits come together because it pops right on like it should. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just get these um, screws started by hand. This is a fiberglass bumper. We don't wanna use any power tools. We just wanna gently put it in and then we'll finish it up with our uh, hand tool. And then with our hand ratchet, our 10 mil, we'll go ahead by hand and gently tighten them up. Once we feel like they're pretty good, we just wanna give a, just a little bit of a turn and that's it. 
So we are underneath the car here. We already got the carpet all trimmed up. You see earlier. So what we did here, we went ahead and put these uh, speed clip right over here. Uh, we already got the whole drill. All we're gonna do now is just line that up with the lip, put the screw, and tighten it up. Okay, so the final step for the rear bumper is to pull off this protective uh, spoon label right here. It's a clear film. The bumper is all buttoned up now, so next thing we have to do is go ahead and put on the tail lights. But we have a different set of tail lights that owner provided for us. Let's take a look at it on the bench. So the USDM tail light does have a red reflector right over here, and JDM doesn't. Other than that, I mean, that's the only thing that I've seen the differences between the JDM versus USDM. If you guys know any more, drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Okay, so we're back here. The bumper is all dry, so we're ready to get this installed. Now, this is the undersplash shield. We went ahead and we trimmed it so that it fits the actual spoon bumper. So we'll take the bumper off and we'll make the two together. Okay, so this is where the spoon meets the OEM and that matches up really well. This is something you won't see from a cheap aftermarket um, body kit. You can see how it just clips right in. For the most part, everything on this kit uh, clipped right in. Minor modification here and there. All right, so we're going ahead and put it in that fog light. We got three mounting points, one, two, and three. So next up, just like the rear, we have the mesh grill and they take these little steel rods that just bend them back to secure it into place.
think we're ready to put the bumper back on. Finally. It's been a long time coming. It's gonna look good. Now we got the car and the bumper all assembled. Uh, this is the bottom portion. We're just putting the final clips in. You can take a look that this just bolts right up like factory. It's pretty amazing how well it does fit. Um, you're still retaining all of your under plastics. Really nice. And we're just finishing up putting the uh, reflector in and we're good to go. Pretty good fitment overall on this bumper. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we'll put the filter in and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the air intake box. We'll pop it in and guys, this is the last step to getting this car all finished up. back in the car and I gotta say this has exceeded any expectations I've ever had it looks seamless and it looks factory we want to definitely give go to it and shout out hooking this up with the front and the weird bumper probably one of the best fiberglass kits I've ever seen on the market it looks just like plastic if you like what you see make sure you support us by hitting the like button if you're new to the channel make sure you hit the subscribe button yeah and like always thanks once again for helping us rebuild our community and we'll see you guys on the next one